Number one says use the base two log table that was printed in your lesson, and I have it here on the screen, to approximate the value of each exponential expression. So um, it's just having you practice using this table. So even if you know what two to the fifth power is, use that to help you to make sure you uh, read this table right. So remember that the log table, um, the input is um, the answer to the exponential and this log base is the exponent. So we wanna be looking for this exponent of five in the output. So then that brings us over here, which tells us that two to the fifth power is equal to 32. So then we'll look for 3.7 in the output and we find that here. So two to the 3.7 would give us 13. Look for 4.25 in the output table. So right here, two to the 4.25 would be 19. Then um, when you go this way, now you are looking for two to what power gives us four. And so this four will be the input of the log. Okay, and you can see that written like this, log base two of x. Um, is equal to whatever it gives you, but this um, input, okay, so this x is your input. So right here, we're looking for this in the, in the x column. Um, and so you see that here, so you see four. Um, so two to the second power gives us four is what this logarithm is asking. So now we're gonna look for 17 in the x column, and we find that here. So 2 to the 4.0875 will give us 17. And then 2 to what power will give us 35? So look for 35 in your x column, and then it'll kick back that exponent of 5.1293. So 2 to the 5.13 will give us 35. Number two, here's the logarithmic expression. How do we say this in words? So this is log base two of 64. And this means two to what power will equal 64? Um, so we just saw on the other screen that 2 to the 5th is equal to 32, so times by 2 again, so 2 to the 6th is equal to, whoops, 64. So the answer to this logarithm, or if we evaluate this logarithm, we get 6. Number 3, what is log base 10 of 100, and what is log base 100 of 10? So remember, this one means 10 to what power equals 100. So this one is 2. And this one means 100 to what power gives us 10. Well, the square root of 100 gives us 10. And square root is the same as an exponent of 1 half. So log base 100 of 10 is 1 half. So log base 2 of 4. So 2 squared is 4 and four to the one half is two, or the square root of four is two. Okay, then in part C, um, it says express B as a power of A, but that's already what this is. It says B equals A squared. So that's already what this is, is B as a power of A. So I think what they meant is express A as a power of B. So basically solve for A. So a is equal to b to the one-half power is, I believe, what this question is actually trying to ask you. Because then if we took um, and plugged this back in to here into this equation, so this says a squared should equal b. So if b was one-half, um, that would equal out. So b to the one-half squared would just be b. So I believe they meant to ask express a as a power of b. Number four, in order for an investment, um, which is 
increasing in value exponentially to increase by a factor of five in 20 years, about what percent does it need to grow each year? So it needs to grow by a factor of five in that 20 years. So then we need to figure out X to the 20th power to equal five. So what would we bring to the 20th power to equal five? So that's basically splitting a factor of five into 20 equal parts. So five to the 120th power. And then if we did that, that would be 1.08 if we calculated that in our calculator. So then what percent does it need to grow? Um, each year. So this is how much is this over 100%, right? So this is 108%. So it needs to grow by 8% each year. Number five, here's the graph of the amount of chemical remaining after it was first measured. And the chemical is decaying exponentially. What is the approximate half-life of this chemical and explain how you know. So let's take a look at the initial value is 800. So the half-life is gonna be when this chemical reaches 400. So I'm just gonna draw the line of 400 across so we can see where it crosses the graph. So here's where the graph equals 400. So then if we go straight down here, we see that this is happening after one and a half weeks. So about 1.5 weeks. Number six, find the missing exponent. Um, so 10 to what power gives us 100? So 10 squared is 100. What would give us 0 0.01? So this is 1 one hundredth which is one over 10 squared. So to bring that exponent down to the base, that would mean it was negative two. So this was 10 to the negative two to give us one over 100. Um, so this is already one tenth, and this one is one over 10 cubed because 1000 is 10 cubed. So this one would just be a positive three because we'd get one cubed over 10 cubed one cubed is one, and then get that 10 cubed. Um, two to what power gives us one half? So we can see that these are reciprocals of each other. So this is um, one over two to the first. So this is going to be negative one power. And then again, we can see that this base and this base are reciprocals of each other. So there's a negative exponent happening. Um, and this is going to be negative one again. Number seven, explain why log base 10 of one equals zero. So if we think about it, right, this is the exponent on a 10 that would give us one. So 10 to the zero power is equal to one. That's a true statement. So this is why the log base 10 of one equals zero, because zero is the exponent on a 10 that would kick back one. Number eight, how are these two equations related? So they um, tell us the same information. It's just two different forms. This one is written in exponential form. And this one is just written in logarithmic form. But it's telling us the same thing. 10 squared is 100. And here is saying, what power of 10 gives us 100? And that's telling us back two. And 10 to the second power, what does that equal? 100. 10 to what power gives us 100? That's two. So same information, just a different form of writing it. <laughs>